manual mode on an Nikon 7500 is really easy and the reason being that you have all your controls over here on the right hand side so what you need to do is you need to take it to the main dial here to M for manual mode and then over here in your LCD display uh, you have basically everything you need in order to to monitor the manual um, setup so top left is the shutter speed top right is the aperture and bottom in the middle here is the ISO if we start out with um, the back button here the, the big one here that controls the shutter speed as you can see and you can see it's, it's changing here as I'm turning the dial same goes for the, uh, the, the aperture here I turn the dial on the front that's new compared to the if you have had a D5600 then you th this is new to you then when I turn that it actually changes uh, the aperture and then finally uh, if I put push down this ISO button you can see everything in the LCD display disappears and then the back dial is uh, where I change the ISO so that's it you have full control of the exposure triangle here and there's nothing more to it maybe I should also mention though that this little you can see there's a little indicator here as a small plus and minus sign here and then some bars and you can see as I as I change the the shutter speed you can see now I'm moving to underexposed and now I'm moving to overexposed so that gives you an idea as to you know whether you're spot on in terms of exposure or not so that's that's super nice um, another way of showing exactly the same is if you go to uh, just wait for the light to settle here if you go to the information button here bottom left if you push that one this menu shows and here top left you can see M for manual which corresponds of course to the manual here um, and again you have top left you have the shutter speed top right you have the aperture and then you have the ISO so if I change the shutter speed that's the main dial here on the back side if I want to change the the aperture that's the dial here on the front so I turn that and it changes the aperture and finally and don't be confused by the bottom part of the screen just stick with the 400 here if I push that button and turn you can see the ISO changes the reason why <clears throat> something new is shown in the bottom of the screen is that you can see the bottom line down here the ISO sensitivity that follows you know the normal ISO, ISO uh, up here in the, in, in the top of the screen but you also get an option to switch to ISO sensitivity control manual and to uh, automate it and that's the front dial again here uh, who does that and you can actually see that's illustrated here uh, this graphic to the right of, of the values um, shows you which button it is that you need to operate and that's it that's all there is to it that wasn't too complicated I hope um, <clears throat> one thing though I would uh, mention in addition to this because this is super easy and I think compared to the D5600 that I had this uh, this way of, of working is so much easier but maybe you like me like old Nikon lenses like this one this is the pancake lens and if you have seen some read some reviews by Ken Rockwell or seen some reviews by the angry photographer then you will know that uh, this lens is um, a super good lens for a very reasonable price you buy them typically used uh, I'm not sure if they're in production anymore I can't imagine that they are but you can see here that you set the aperture by turning the aperture ring so that's purely manual and you also set the you can see the glass moving here you set the, the, the focus uh, completely manual and finally if you're looking for some CPU connectors you'll be looking for a long time because they aren't there uh, the reason being that this is a 100% manual lens um, so this 
if you want to use this lens, you're down to really, really bare bone uh, manual mode. Everything has to be set manually. And believe it or not, the, the bar that you had here with the modern lens, where you see that you have this value here where it, it sort of gives you an indicator whether, whether you, are, you are under or overexposed this... Um, I can see I'm, I'm trying to change the ISO. How am I doing here? Anyway, you can see I'm, I'm very overexposed here because the bar is very much to the right. Um, but let's see how that performs when, um, when we go to, to the good old 1980s Nikon lens, which in terms of performance, I can highly recommend. It's, it's an outstanding lens. Nothing wrong with that. Built like a tank, all metal, made in Japan. All things right, <clears throat> apart from the fact that there is now no metering support, there is no autofocus, there is no changing of the aperture from within uh, the camera as such, everything is manual. So when you switch it on, the first thing you can notice, if you try to use the lens in, say, aperture mode, you can hit that button as much as you like, it will only work in manual mode. As the second thing you can notice is that this bar down here where we had the the indicator to over and under exposure is gone because it can't tell anymore. And finally you will see the aperture indicator is just two bashes uh, because you have to turn that manually and you do that turning this dial here. So what can you do in order to figure out if the exposure is right well, I would say that a good strategy is <laughs> simply just to shoot and see what what's you know captured by by the camera, and then adjust accordingly. You can probably quickly see if it's under or overexposed. But there is a little trick that can help you um, just a little bit in terms of um, figuring out what the right exposure is. If you press the live view and after that press the information button you can see here that that it it says exposure preview and then it says on you can you can toggle this and and, and select different options but but that's that's uh, sort of now it's on so let's have a look here and you can see that now i'm first and foremost i'm out of focus that helped a bit and secondly if I turn the aperture ring, you can see that it actually gives me some indication here. Now I'm to pull it mildly overexposed, and now it starts to look right. It also helps with the with the shutter speed. And finally, if you change the ISO, you can see also that changes. So there you have some idea what you know the exposure, uh, correct exposure is, and then. Subject to your lagging, I find live view to be extremely slow. So I would probably, after having done that, switch live view off and then simply just take a picture. And then once I've done that, I would do like this and see. Now you can see this came out um, blurred because I the shutter was too slow. But anyway, you, I think you get the idea. You can use the, the live view with the preview to um, get an idea whether the uh, the exposure is right or not and then uh, you can adjust a little bit accordingly so that's the way I think you to survive with one of these good old-time lenses um, from uh, Nikon okay thank you for watching hope you enjoyed this take care bye bye